Howdy, Bruce Edgerly here, co-founder and vice president of Backcountry Access in our backyard here in Summit County, Colorado. We're here today to talk about transceiver basics. Uh, we're going to talk about the science behind transceivers, some basic concepts that apply to all transceivers really. And then we'll go through beacon searching, probing, and shoveling technique in our 101 series. Transceiver searching 101, probing searching 101, and shoveling 101. And then we have an advanced video to watch once you graduate from those videos. So let's talk about transceivers. Why do we call them transceivers? Because they transmit and they receive. We don't call them transponders, and generally we try to avoid calling them beacons because that could be confused with an emergency locator beacon which is a completely different technology. All right, since it's a transceiver and we need to pull it out to receive a signal, we need to make sure it's accessible. So you always want to wear it underneath your outermost layer so that you know it's not fully exposed to get torn off if you're in a violent avalanche, but it's accessible enough so you can pull it out and so somebody else can pull it out and turn it off once they find you. Another place you can put it is in your side pants pocket. Just make sure that that pocket is built into the inside of the pants and not sewn onto the outside and make sure that you clip it into the zipper area. The golden rule for turning on your transceiver is put it on, turn it on, take it off, turn it off. In other words, turn it on when you put it on. Don't worry about wasting batteries because in transmit mode it should last up to 300 hours in transmit. So there's no reason to try to conserve batteries. That'll last most people an entire season. Another important consideration is to isolate your transceiver from other electronics on your body, like cell phones, GPSs, or GoPros. In transmit mode, it doesn't make a huge difference. If they're right on top of each other, it could affect the shape of your search. It could affect your battery life a little bit. So it's a good idea to just keep them a few inches apart, 20 centimeters, they say. Um, so that if you do get tumbled around an avalanche, they don't get shoved into each other. In search mode, you can have some effects, uh, reduced range, possible false signals, if they're very close to each other. Um, so we suggest making sure that in search mode, you're at least 50 centimeters apart from the searching beacon and the electronic device that you may have on you. Um, but that's good technique anyways. You should be searching with your hands outstretched so that you're looking ahead of you and not getting fixated on the transceiver screen. If you do end up having to perform a search, generally you're going to want to turn off all those electronic devices to prevent any kind of complications. Let's talk about the transmit part of the transceiver. When you turn on any transceiver, you're going to get a series of diagnostics, but the most important thing is the battery power. Make sure you never go out there with battery power of less than 40%, at least with the trackers. Make sure you only use high quality name brand alkaline batteries in your transceiver. Other batteries tend to have variations in the, the size and the resistance, and then the rechargeable and lithium batteries tend to drop right off rather than having a gradual discharge curve which makes it much easier to predict when your battery is going to die. In addition to checking your battery power every day, we suggest a full trailhead test. There's really no substitute for a trailhead test in the morning where you check both transmit and search functions with everybody in your group. It's actually more thorough than sending it back to the manufacturer for an electronic checkup, and it's more thorough than just walking by a transceiver checker at your local trailhead. All Avalanche transceivers basically transmit the same way. They send out a beep every second or so, and the only difference between different brands is how fast they beep. Some go beep, 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 and some go beep, beep, beep. Other than that, they're pretty much the same. In search mode, that's where you'll see a lot more differentiation. All transceivers, at least since 1996, transmit at the 457 kilohertz frequency, meaning they all are compatible with each other, and they all send out an electromagnetic field every second or so, shaped like this. And what they do in search mode is 
steer you in along the so-called flux lines of this electromagnetic field. That's why you notice that when you're searching out in the field, you're not always walking in straight lines. Sometimes you're walking in big arcs. That's because you're following those flux lines. An important thing to remember is that this field, this electromagnetic field, is three-dimensional. It's like a big onion. So these curves are also in the vertical dimension. And this can make it a little bit complicated once you get in close. You'll see with a single or dual antenna beacon when you get in close, sometimes there'll be a little hiccup. And this is just where the field lines are perpendicular to your horizontal searching transceiver. So it has a hard time picking the signal up strongly. The third antenna is meant to align itself with the electromagnetic field better in those spots and therefore eliminate those hiccups, which we sometimes call spikes. That's all the third antenna does, is it cleans up the last few meters of the search and it eliminates those little spike signals. The third antenna does not increase your receive range. It doesn't help in multiple burials. All it really does is clean up the final fine search. You'll notice that for this reason, most avalanche transceivers directional lights will turn off at two or three meters because when you're in this close, the field lines do get complicated and at that point you're performing bracketing instead of following the flux lines and you should be moving in perpendicular lines. In our transceiver searching 101 video, we'll go into some detail on how to do a single burial, including all four phases of the beacon search. I want to just summarize the two most important concepts. One of them is to follow those flux signs, you need to follow the lights on your transceiver, and when the light goes left, you go left. You also need to make sure that the numbers are going down. If they're going up, that means you're going farther away from the victim, and you need to turn around 180 degrees and go the other direction. The most important part, and sometimes more challenging part of the search, is the, the fine search. This is the part within three meters, and here you really want to slow down. Basically, we say run, walk, crawl. In the first part of the beacon search, you're running as fast as you can. Then you want to slow down when you get to about 10 meters. And then at three meters, you get into the fine search. This is where we want to get on all fours. And we want to crawl, literally, on the snow surface and get our transceiver as close as possible to the victim. When we're in the fine search, we perform a process called bracketing, where we look for the lowest possible distance reading, we go past it to confirm it's the lowest reading, then we come back to the lowest reading and we go out to either side to see if there's an even lower reading. During this bracketing process, it's mandatory to keep your transceiver in the same direction. Don't rotate it or sweep it because that will change the numbers a little bit. Just keep it straight and follow perfectly straight lines the whole time. Make sure that if the terrain is uneven, if there's debris or a slope, that you keep the transceiver up above the debris so you're not moving it up and down and changing the distance readings. And make sure that you follow the snow surface, that you're parallel to it. It's really important when you're bracketing to make sure that you're performing nice wide brackets using your full arm's length and extending your tether, attaching your beacon to your harness all the way, rather than small little micro movements. The more you outstretch your arms, the more distance information you're gonna get and you're gonna be able to confirm whether or not you've really hit that lowest reading. Once you've confirmed the lowest distance reading, this is where we start probing. We'll get into more detail on probing and shoveling technique in Probing 101 and Shoveling 101.